the name of the science phone, the third, I was, too, I was jumping, jumping ahead here. Jumping the ahead. third and final part of our uh, series on lightning. We're focusing on what to do if you get caught outside. And I've been caught outside before. We'll get to that one in a minute. Yeah. First of all, let's start. Trina asks, what do you do if you're caught out on a boat with okay. no cover? Um, first thing I'm going to tell you is this. The number one cause of lightning deaths are fisher persons, anglers, if you will, okay? Because they are out on a boat and you are absolutely the tallest thing around. So, obviously, if you can't get back to the dock, you are miles offshore. You, you really can't outrun these storms because of the winds and the sea start to pick up around them. Right. And that can cause damage to your boat. So let's say you have an enclosed cabin. Not all of us do, but some of us do. You want to go inside in that cabin. You want to put your life jacket on and you want to stay away from metal. Why would you put your life jacket on? Yeah, why? Okay, here's the answer to that. Because if lightning was to strike your boat, okay, and you were to get knocked out, right, your life jacket's on, so if you fell in, and or oh. if lightning hits your boat and put a hole in it, which is done, cause it to go on fire or it sinks, your life jacket is already on. So a thunderstorm, get those life jackets on, you never know. Lower your antennas. A lot of people have those oh. big towers for your fishing pole. Take those down. Get off your radios. Turn off your electronics. Anchor your boat. These are all things to make it a little bit safer if you are completely stuck, in the, stuck out on the water. Now, if you're in an open boat, Russell, we, you know, like a pontoon boat or something that doesn't have, you know, that enclosed cabin, there's really not much you can do. What they say is anchor up, life jackets on, take all your jewelry off. Remember, lightning is attracted to metal and get yourself as low as you can, squatting down right into the interior part of your boat. That, to be honest, if you are stuck in that worst case scenario, that is about all you can do on a boat to keep yourself safe. It really is without, don't use the electronics, don't use those VHF radios or anything like that. Anything that could draw that lightning in, you wanna stay away from. All right, I think this is a follow up with that. Yeah. What about just getting in the water? Is it safer than a boat? Absolutely, positively not. You do not want to get into the water. Now, when lightning does hit water, it will spread out. And it could spread out, you know, 20, 25 meters or so. And then you're going to be in the water and you're going to be struck. That is one of the least safe places you can be. Three of the least safe places you would be in the water. So that means swimming pools, folks. Get out of your swimming pools. That goes for that too, not just out into the Gulf. You do not want to, you want to stay in your boat. As risky as that is, it is still technically a little bit safer than you would be if you were in the water. Okay, this is one that we've, I think most of us have experienced, even you, even you the weatherman has experienced this. If, you're, if you get stuck out and there's a storm coming, mm -hmm. there's no shelter. Mm -hmm. the, the, as Sue is asking, is it, is it okay to lay flat on the ground? No, no, in fact, you do not want to lay flat on the ground. This happened to me, quick story, let me tell you. I was on base shore one day, Russell, my fault. I thought I could get my run in before the line of thunderstorms came in. It came in faster than I thought. I'm stuck on Bayshore. I can't cross the road to get back to my car. Why? I got cars flying by at 40 to 50 miles per hour in a blinding rain. I didn't want to play Frogger with the cars. What do you do? This is what you do. Some scientists say yes, some scientists say no. This is what you can do. If you're out in a field, you can't get inside. You want to crouch down. Think of a baseball catcher. Can we get a wide shot in this studio? Yeah. Can, can we, we get do a wide that? shot yeah. in this studio? Let me show you what I did. This show. I'm going to show you exactly what I did. Which camera can we do this on? Yeah, you're going to need to, I know, okay, it's going to have to come on. Hey, can you turn it this way? Turn it this way. Turn it this way. Uh, so we should have okay. planned this so better. This is, we no, apologize. No, this is what I did. So I'm on base shore and I'm thinking, what do I tell the elementary school kids yeah. to do? You're stuck outside. You want to get on the balls of your feet, though. You don't want to be flat-footed. Get on the balls of your feet, okay? And you want to just stay like this. Why did I do that? Now I'm the lowest thing out there. The trees are obviously a lot higher. Even the wall on Bayshore is, is higher than me now. So now I've decreased my chances just a smidge. Now, if lightning does strike 10 feet away from me, uh, it is what it is. But that's the safest thing you can do is get as low to the ground as you can. And, and you say it's important to get on the balls of your feet. Because if lightning does strike, it's only going to strike the tip of your feet. If you're like this or you're like this, now all of a sudden your whole body's in, into it. You know what I mean? Now your body's going to be struck, and it presents a whole different problem for you. That's an extreme situation. It's not going to happen often. If you're in a field, normally there's a car you can go to or a shelter you can go to. But if you're out and you're stuck and you have nowhere you can be, you have to ride it out, 
that's what you can do. Don't get under a tree. That is the worst thing you could do. You can absolutely, because now all of a sudden you're one of, you've made yourself part of that tree. And people will say, oh, I didn't stand under it. I stood 10 feet away from it. It doesn't matter. Lightning strikes that tree, comes down, a ground current goes out in all directions. And if you're within 20 feet of that tree, you're going to get struck. I want to get into this one real fast. I'm, I think you can probably answer. How long should people wait okay. after the storm to go back outside? When you don't hear the thunder anymore. The rule of thumb is this, 30 minutes after you hear the last clap of thunder, that's the safe, safe, safe. But for me, it's like when I don't hear the thunder anymore, not really close enough to be struck anymore. So that's why. Okay. So that's what you should do. This was great. And, I, and, and, and you know what? We'll probably need to do some more. People are going to keep sending you questions. And I want to mention, what, there were a ton of questions we couldn't get there because right. obviously this is, you know, a short segment. I will get on my Facebook page. It take me, might take me the next day or so. I'll get back to everybody for their questions because okay. there are some other questions too. It was great advice. It really was. You're the best, man. And I got a good stretch. I know you got, you I got, got a good cramp in your, in your calves now. Um, I let's get, I'll get out of the way. Well, I would have polished my shoes well, if I knew I was going to do this. So, I, I mean, didn't want to bring that up. I didn't want to okay. bring that up. <laughs>